Today, we're taking a look at some Detroit Red Wings stuff. Now, we know if you go on to the article that we're referencing, you're going to see that it's from August 1st, which is literally like a week and a half ago, and it's not really all too recent. But there were just so many other topics that I wanted to talk about, and because I don't want to upload like seven or eight videos a day, I end up pushing topics forward, topics that don't really decay over time and can still be discussed a week from now rather than just now, in order to make room for the topics that cannot be pushed a week from now. But this is one of those topics that can kind of be brought up and be like, yeah, you know, that's a really interesting discussion point over there. So the source we're taking a look at today is an article from Helene St. James from the Detroit Free Press. Pretty much, it goes over two teams, the Detroit Red Wings and the Seattle Kraken, and what it would potentially take if the Red Wings wanted to give up Abdelkader and Franz Nielsen over to the brand new NHL franchise. Now, what exactly is the main idea in this article? Well, you can kind of tell it from the title. The article's title is, Should the Detroit Red Wings pay the Seattle Kraken to get rid of roster underachievers. This is an interesting idea that presents itself because we saw this very same thing happen in the Vegas expansion draft. Now, what exactly are we talking about? Well, we're talking about the getting rid of players who you would probably want to not have on your team alongside of assets that you probably would want to have on your team. To set up the context for everything here, we have the elite prospect profiles of both Justin Abdelkader as well as Franz Nielsen. Abdelkader is a 33-year-old left-right winger, 6'2", 214 pounds. His contract goes until 2022-2023 at $4.25 million. He had three points this season in 49 games, and 19 points last season in 71 games. Sure, he's a former 40-point guy, but that was literally like five years ago, back when he was in his late 20s. Today, Abdelkader was probably one of the worst Red Wings on the entire roster, and with a stat line like this, you really can't go wrong with replacing him with somebody else in your lineup. As for Franz Nielsen, well, this Danish hockey player used to play in the New York Islanders system, but now, as a 36-year-old, he's making $5.25 million on the Red Wings until 2022. His most recent season saw him put up 9 points, which, yeah, that's really not great. The Red Wings have this guy until he's 38 years old, and he's only getting worse as time goes on. So, what Helene St. James is proposing in this article is something that a reader suggested to the news outlet. C. Joseph suggests that Steve Eiserman should do a pre-arranged deal with the Seattle Kraken, involving Justin Abdelkader or Franz Nielsen. He says, I would not be opposed to Iserman shedding a bad contract if the sweetener was a third or fourth round draft pick or even a prospect. Is Seattle in the same position as Vegas to demand a high compensation for taking on bad contracts? This is referring to the expansion draft from Vegas, where the Vegas Golden Knights received many extra draft picks and prospects from other teams who were trying to get rid of their bad contracts. They said, hey Vegas, Take a look at this. We've got this bad contract. We need to re-sign some players, but this guy is really hindering our ability to do so. I got a suggestion for you, Vegas. How about, instead of taking one of our young AHL guys that could probably become an NHLer, you take this bad contract of ours, and in return, we'll give you a prospect and a pick. How does that sound, Vegas, eh? And that's the kind of thing that Vegas did. They wheeled and dealed so many extra draft picks and prospects, which is why they ended up with three firsts at the end of their expansion draft. And what Helene St. James's article here is proposing is if the Red Wings can do the same thing with Seattle to free up the money from Abdelkader and Nielsen. We all kind of understand the context here. The flat cap has been instilled, and it means that teams that were expecting the salary cap to rise are not going to end up seeing that thought out. So it makes some teams that have already locked in their future in the long term kind of in a spot of danger. Now, with all things considered, the Red Wings are not that, but at the same time, even though they do have cap space, they do have to re-sign a boatload of RFAs, not to mention some of the other D-men that they have to re-sign a few years down the road. At the end of the day, freeing up your team from money attached to players that aren't really all too great is, in general, a positive thing. So, the idea in this video is whether or not the Red Wings should give something up to get one of these bad contracts over to Seattle. 
a brand new team would probably have a little bit of difficulty filling up a salary cap all the way through to its maximum capacity. So maybe get a little bit of help in doing that, get a few bad contracts, and get some picks and prospects in the process, why not? Well, this is what Helene St. James says about it herself in the article. She says this, Much as it might appeal to have Seattle take Abdelkader or Nielsen, it does not make sense to do so at the expense of a top prospect. Tuck was a first-round guy in 2014, or a first-round draft pick. Those are the pieces that are crucial to a rebuild, she says. The Kraken have no reason to take on the contract of Abdelkader anyway, who in 2021 will have two years left at $4.25 million, or Nielsen, for a third or fourth round pick or a middling prospect. Why would Seattle GM Ron Francis want to do so? And from that perspective, it's definitely very fair to understand why Ron Francis would probably say no. Hey Ron Francis, it's Iserman over here. We've got these two bad contracts on our team that we would probably not want to have. You want them? We'll give you a third and a fourth for them. The price is just not there. You kind of see where I'm getting at here? So, in terms of forging out a deal that could involve something like that, a third or a fourth, why not talk a little bit higher up in the price range? Why not, instead of a third or a fourth, it's a second and a third, or maybe even a first, or maybe even a prospect that most Red Wings fans see value in? Because when you come over to that, all of a sudden there's a little bit more oomph to your trade offer and a little bit more reason for Ron Francis to bite the bullet. Again, these are the kinds of deals that we saw with Vegas. They got first round picks and Shea Theodore and Marcia So and a whole bunch of other guys via trades and as guarantees to have them select other players that other teams didn't want. So the price is in that territory. If you're a Red Wings fan, I want you to tell me in the comments below if it's a high-tier prospect, maybe a first-round talent like Valeno, or it's a guy like Albert Johansson or Antti Tuomisto being packaged with Abdulkader in exchange for what would be the selection of Abdulkader and maybe like a fifth or something. Is that something you would see value in to the point of wanting to do it? When it comes to wanting to get rid of invaluable contracts, you're going to have to balance that out with value that supersedes and overtakes the negative value. And from both sides there, I can totally see why you would want or would want to not do this. No, I'm not parting with my beloved anti Tuomisto prospect just to get rid of Abdulkader. If I want to get rid of Abdulkader, I gotta wait two years. I'll do that instead. There's no need to move these guys because this team isn't really supposed to be good anyway. Why not shelter on the bad cap for all these years and wait till they expire? And once that time comes around, that's when Zadina, Sider, Valeno, and Dylan Larkin are all going to be in their primes or entering their primes, and that's when we can be competitive. Just use the time because the time is the most valuable asset we have. No need to rush things forward. I can totally see both points of view, so I want you to tell me in the comments below what your thoughts are about this. Because the devil's advocate perspective to the one that we just talked about is, you know, every dollar is important, and by the time Tyler Bertuzzi or Mansa or Hronik are all gonna need re-signings on their deals if they do take short bridge deals, it'd be much easier for our team to keep all the players that we want to keep in a flat cap world if we didn't have Nielsen or Abdelkader's contracts on the books. So. I can totally see both sides of the coin here. Honestly, when you put it the way that we put it, where it's an anti Tuomisto or a first round pick going over to Seattle in exchange for taking Abdulkader or something, I don't know if I would do that. Like, the Red Wings are supposed to be so poor, and a lot of these players and picks, the picks especially, are going to be super valuable in due time. The first round pick for the Red Wings this year is literally fourth overall, and they're not supposed to get better next year by a significant amount, so it's fair to say that their next round first is probably going to be somewhere at least in the top seven. If a top seven pick in the 2021 draft is what you're asking for, if you're Ron Francis getting asked on whether or not you would take Abdelkader or Nielsen, then I gotta say no to that, man. A seventh overall pick in the 2021 draft is a Luke Hughes. It's an Owen Power. It's a Brant Clark. It's a Dylan Gunther. It's a very, very valuable prospect. And the price for that is just too high, in my opinion. So ultimately, I don't really think something like this is going to happen, nor do I think it's really in the realm of possibility just because the value of things is so different on both sides. But... Again, that's what we have a comment section for, right? Talk to me in the comments below what you thought about this topic and what you would be willing to give up to Seattle to take on an Abdulkader or a Nielsen. Furthermore, is what you would be willing to give up enough? Because I know all hockey fans can somewhat define what it is that they would like, but 
The rational part of us can always say whether or not what we like is all that achievable. So let me know all that in the comments below. I hope you enjoyed this video. And bye.